for book one, proposition number 45 of Euclid's Elements, to construct in a given rectilineal angle a parallelogram equal to a given rectilineal figure. So basically, we're starting with some figure that's four-sided, this figure ABCD, and we're given this angle E. And our goal is to construct a parallelogram equal in area to this four-sided figure and containing this angle E. So this proposition is one of the longest ones in the first book of Euclid's Elements. So to save some space, I will be omitting some of the simpler steps that I take. Namely, for instance, we'll be using postulate number one to connect points B and D, but I won't write that down because we'll need all of the room. So by connecting points B and D, I'm essentially separating this into two triangles. And I'll start by using book one, proposition number 42, to construct a parallelogram equal to triangle ABD, and also containing this angle E. So this triangle ABD will be equal to parallelogram F, G, H, K. So I'll construct that here. And now that we've had the parallelogram constructed, this angle E is equal to this angle one here. So angle E equals angle one. And now I can use book one proposition number 44 to construct a parallelogram equal to this triangle BCD, but along this line GH and containing this angle E. So in essence, triangle BCD will be equal to parallelogram GLMH. So let's construct that parallelogram. And within this parallelogram that we just constructed, this angle three is equal to angle E. So angle three equals angle E. And due to common notion number one, this angle one, since it's equal to angle E and angle E is equal to angle three, this means that angle one and angle three are equal to each other. So from this point, what we have to do is prove that KH and HM are in a straight line with each other, and we would have to do the same thing for FG and GL. So to start, let's use this angle one equals angle three and use common notion number two to add angle two to each side. So angle one plus angle two is equal to angle three plus angle two. And the reason we added angle two to each side of this is that angle one and angle two, notice here and here, these are the interior angles between two parallel lines, FK and GH. So these two angles we know have to add up to two right angles. And we know this because of book one, proposition number 29. And since angle one and angle two add up to two right angles, we know due to common notion number one that angle three and angle two, these angles here, add up to two right angles as well. And since they add up to two right angles, we know because of book one, proposition number 14, that KH and HM are in a straight line with each other. So essentially, KM is a straight line. So now that we've proven that KM is a straight line, we just need to prove that FL is a straight line as well. And since FG and KM are parallel to each other, we know that this angle four and this angle three, since they're alternate angles, these must be equal to each other. So angle three equals angle four. And we know this because of book one, proposition number 29. And then from here, we'll use common notion number two and add angle five to each. So angle three plus angle five is equal to angle four plus angle five. But angle three and angle five, notice are interior angles between the lines GL and HM, which we know are parallel. 
So these must add up to two right angles. So we can write that, that this angle three plus angle five is equal to two right angles. And this is due to book one, proposition number 29. And since angle three and angle five add up to two right angles and they're equal to the sum of angle four and angle five, we know due to common notion number one that this angle here and this angle here, these also add up to two right angles. And since these add up to two right angles, we know that FG and GL are in a straight line with each other. So essentially, due to book one, proposition 14, we know that FL is a straight line. So our next step is to prove that this figure FLMK is a parallelogram. So to do that, we just need to show that opposite sides are equal to each other and parallel. So to start, we know since FKHG, since it's a parallelogram, this side FK must be equal to GH and it must also be parallel to it. So we know this because of book one, proposition number 34. So let's write that FK is equal to GH and also that FK is parallel to GH but we'll use the same argument between the lines GH and LM since they are a part of a parallelogram. So they must be equal to each other and parallel as well. So GH equals LM. And I'll write over here that GH is parallel to LM. So we can use common notion number one, since FK and GH are equal and GH and LM are equal, then we also know that LM and FK are equal. So LM equals FK. And we know because of book one, proposition number 30, that if two lines are parallel to the same line, then they're also parallel to each other. So we also know that LM is parallel to the line FK. So in other words, we have that this line FK is equal and parallel to this line LM. And because of book one, proposition number 33, we know that if we have two lines that are equal and parallel, that if we connect those lines at their endpoints, so this line FL and KM, then they will also be equal and parallel to each other. So in other words, due to book one, proposition number 33, the lines KM and FL are equal to each other, but they're also parallel to each other. So KM is parallel to FL as well. So now we know that FLMK is a parallelogram. So with that in mind, we know that this parallelogram is composed of two parts. So let's write that out, that FLMK is equal to this parallelogram plus this parallelogram. So FLMK is equal to FGHK plus GLMH. GLMH. But these two parallelograms, these smaller ones, these are just equal to these two triangles up here, right? This GLMH is equal to triangle BCD and FGHK is equal to triangle ABD. So what we really have is that this parallelogram is equal to the two triangles, triangle ABD plus triangle BCD. But we know that these two triangles just compose this four-sided figure here. So due to common notion number one, and since we know these two triangles add up to the big four-sided figure, we can write that the parallelogram FLMK is equal to ABCD. So in essence, this parallelogram FLMK that we've constructed 
is equal to this four-sided figure A, B, C, D, but also contains this angle E. Since we have it here, that angle E is equal to angle one. So we have met all of the required conditions and can end with Q, E, F.